नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रभाकर एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल गोइंग टू लर्न साइबर ग्रीन रियल टाइम और क्वांटिटेटिव पीसीआर इट्स मेथड प्राइमरी डिजाइनिंग मेल्टिंग कर्व एंड डेटा एनालिसिस रियल टाइम पीसीआर इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम कन्वेंशनल पीसीआर इन द सेंस दैट हेयर वी कैन मॉनिटर द एम्पलीफिकेशन ऑफ टारगेटेड डी एन ए ड्यूरिंग द पी सी आर इट सेल्फ दैट इज इन ए रियल टाइम मैनर बट नॉट एट द एंड ऑफ पी but in case of conventional pcr whether the amplification has been done or not can only be monitored at the end of pcr run using agarose gel electrophoresis and this process is time consuming and can take up to 4 to 6 hours second advantage of real time pcr is that it can be used to accurately quantify the target genes as we know the quantification of gene expression using the traditional methods are almost unreliable for quantification of gene expression first the pcr machine is calibrated with different dilutions of known dna concentration so just like dna replication process where dna polymerase polymerize the dna within the cell requires different components for polymerization real time pcr is also carried out in a similar way but in a test tube simply by mixing dna polymerase and other components in a thermal cycler real time pcr machine so actually what happens we just add different concentration of known dna template a pair of single stranded primers cyber green dye dntps tag dna polymerase magnesium chloride and the reaction buffer i will discuss the role of each of this component later in the video after preparing the reaction mixture in a tube it is mixed by vortexing and flash spin for few seconds to settle down the content the settled content in the tube is then placed in a real time machine having a thermal cycler where temperature cycles at different ranges initially the tube content is heated at 94 degrees celsius for 5 minute and after that it undergo three phases of temperature change in a cyclic manner first is at 94 degrees celsius for 1 minute to denature the template dna please note that the primers are already in a single stranded form so only the template is getting denatured second is 55 degrees celsius for 1 minute where primer anneal to its target sequence in a template dna and third is at 74 degrees celsius for 2 minute for the extension of primer or polymerization by tag dna polymerase these steps are repeated multiple times mostly around 35 to 40 times to finally yield the polymerized dna as it is called real time pcr so how we can monitor the amplification in a real time the answer is the cyber green dye this dye produces fluorescence only when it has bound with the double stranded dna remember we have added this dye in the reaction mixture but initially where unamplified dna was present this dye did not produce any fluorescent signal but as the pcr proceeds and the new dna has been formed by pcr amplification this dye intercalates the double stranded dna and start giving the fluorescent signal when excited by a particular wavelength therefore as the pcr cycle number increases so the amount of amplified dna also increases and more dye binds to double stranded dna giving more fluorescence so the amount of fluorescent signal is directly proportional to the dna amplification and we can measure this amplification in every pcr cycle or in a real time finally after amplification the software will generate the amplification plot for our analysis for calibration as we can see in this plot that if high dna concentration is present in our sample we can detect it at low pcr cycle or low threshold cycle or low ct value and if dna is diluted then we have to wait for high cycle number in order to get the fluorescent signal to be detected and we get high ct value for the quantitative purpose we have to follow this rule if we get low ct value in a real time pcr it means that sample contains higher concentration of dna and the vice versa after the instrument is calibrated we can proceed with our samples here also 
the procedure remains the same as we have discussed earlier except that instead of known DNA, here we will add our sample DNA. As the PCR proceeds, DNA concentration is increased and we start to see fluorescent signal in the computer attached with PCR machine. But there is one drawback of using this cyber green dye. This dye can bind to any DNA if it is double stranded. So we cannot be sure whether the DNA which is amplifying in PCR is our target DNA or a contaminating DNA is amplifying. In other words, cyber green dye lack specificity. Therefore, to check the contaminating DNA, if any amplified, we have to run a melting curve of the amplified product. Melting curve is plotted between changes in fluorescence versus temperature. We know that a particular DNA molecule have a specific and a defined sequence of base pairs of A, a T, G and C. And multiple copies of a single DNA molecule would also have the same defined pattern of sequence of base pair. Therefore, the base pair sequence of one DNA will have a particular melting temperature depending on their GC content and will give only one peak when upon melting or denaturation. And no two DNA molecule having different sequences will have the same TM or melting temperature. So if a contaminating DNA is present or amplified in a PCR other than our target DNA, we will get two or more peaks in a melting curve. Just like what we are, we can see in this graph. A lighter second peak can be seen suggesting a contaminating DNA is present in our sample. That is how we will check the purity of DNA amplification using the melting curve. This additional step will not be required if we use more specific Tagman probe in the real-time PCR. Coming to the most important part of PCR that is primer designing. Correct primer designing is very important for the successful amplification of the desired target sequence. When designing the primer, following points should be considered. First is the primer length. It should be around 18 to 24 nucleotide long. A shorter primer will not bind tightly to the template and also the shorter primer have the tendency to anneal at non-specific position. Whereas longer primer will take too much of time to anneal and also to denature. Second is Real-time PCR is useful for the amplification of shorter DNA fragments from 50 to 150 base pair than conventional PCR which can amplify up to 500 nucleotides. Third is the primer should have a GC content of around 50 to 60 percent as this range provides firm annealing to the target DNA and at the same time can easily be removed during the denaturation phase. Fourth is the melting temperature. Melting temperature is the temperature at which 50% of the DNA is in denatured form. And melting temperature is dependent upon the GC content. Higher the GC content, higher the melting temperature. As we know that there are three hydrogen bonds between uh, present between G and C. If the GC content is between 50 to 60 percent, then the TM generally comes around 50 to 65 degrees Celsius. Determination of this TM is very very crucial because the annealing temperature can be calculated only by this TM. The annealing temperature of primer should be kept 5 degree below their TM. Because we know that at TM 50% of the primers are in denatured form. But at 5 degree below the TM most of the primers are not in denatured form but have annealed to the template. So that the polymerization could occur. Next is the 3 prime end of primer should contain at least 2 GC for the rigid binding to the template DNA. Next is the forward and reverse primer should not be complementary to each other. Otherwise, they will anneal to each other and form primer dimer and ultimately the target will not be amplified. Few other important factors to be considered are avoiding the repetition of single nucleotide more than three times consecutively. And also the target should not contain any single nucleotide polymorphism or SNP or any sequences that are bound to form any secondary structure. Otherwise, primer will not bind to that part of target DNA. Lastly, primer should be specific to their target and must not bind similar sequences. Therefore, prior to use, primer sequence queries should be searched within the database to identify any potential similar sequences is present within the target DNA or not. Coming to the functions of each reagent used in the real-time PCR, 
first is the template obviously template provides the sequences that are to be amplified forward primer this forward primer provide forward primer provides three prime oh for the tag dna polymerase for the synthesis of antisense dna strand whereas reverse primer provides three prime oh for the extension of sense strand dntps in pcr we want to make dna so we will use the deoxy form of ntps but not the ribonucleotides that are used in the rna synthesis next is the tag polymerase tag polymerase is a thermostable dna polymerase obtained from thermophilic bacteria called thermos aquaticus we are using this enzyme because it can tolerate the 94 degrees celsius of temperature in the first phase of pcr reaction buffer is used to maintain the ph of the reaction magnesium chloride is required by the dna polymerase as cofactor where the cyber green dye is used to monitor the progress of amplification in real time as this dye binds to double stranded dna and produce the fluorescent signal after amplification the software will generate the amplification plot like this so let us analyze this plot one by one first one is the baseline it refers to the fluorescent signal level during the early cycles of pcr usually starting 3 to 15 cycles it can be seen as the background or the noise of the reaction next is the threshold it is the level of signal that is statistically significant over the baseline signal that is threshold distinguishes the amplification signal from the background signal or in other words we can say signal above the background level is threshold next is the threshold cycle the point of amplification which touches the threshold is the threshold cycle or in other words it is the number of cycles required for fluorescent signal to cross the threshold or exceeds the background level determination of ct value is the prime objective of real time pcr and indicates what concentration of target dna was present in the sample as i said earlier lower the ct value means higher concentration of dna was present in the sample and vice versa this different line shows amplification for different samples and the sample from this yellow line had the highest concentration than others that is how we quantify the dna earlier in the video i have shown this plot for calibration and here i want to explain few more things from this plot remember we should analyze this plot from the calibration not from the sample first is the correlation coefficient correlation coefficient tell us how strong a relationship between two variables in this case our sample data and the data from standard curve higher its value better is the result next is the y intercept the point on y axis or ct value where the slope touches is the y intercept and it indicates the limit of detection of the reaction that is it indicates the number of pcr cycles required for amplification above the threshold or we can say this real time pcr machine will take around 45 cycles to amplify one dna molecule to be significantly detected by the fluorescence next is the slope it is the measure of efficiency of pcr machine and a value of minus 3.32 means 100% efficiency last is the efficiency it is the ability of pcr machine to double the amount of dna per cycle as we know from semi conservative model of dna replication two dna molecules are formed from one dna molecule